Hi Grade 11's Mr. Hill here. Um, welcome back to video number two and today we're going to be talking about significant figures. So just as a little bit of refresher from last lesson, um, let's suppose we have a measurement and that measurement is taken on a weigh scale and it reads 3.42 grams. So 3.42 grams. And there is my poor drawing of a weigh scale, but we get it at 3.42 grams. Now remember from last time that the first numbers of the, the first few numbers of a measurement are always usually fairly accurate. They are what we know for certain. That last number in that last decimal place is what we call our uncertain digit. Now this becomes important because in significant figures, when we're talking about what numbers are significant in the measurement, it is all of those numbers that we are sure about plus the first uncertain number. So for an example, in 3.42 grams, that two, that last digit in the decimal place, is the estimate or the guess, the uncertain digit. Three and 0.4 are our sure numbers of this measurement. So therefore, if the sig figs are all the sure numbers in the measurement plus our first uncertain number, we would say that this measurement 3.42 has three significant figures, or three sig figs. So just going to go through four of our golden rules of significant figures that we'll be used as we go through and try to calculate and round up our answers in, through physics to significant figures. So our first rule is that all of the numbers from 1 to 9 are considered significant. So 1, 2, 3, etc., all the way up to 9 are significant numbers. Because they're significant numbers, any zero that's trapped in between them are also significant. So as an example, if we have 5 or 1, we know that all numbers 1 through 9 are significant, so we know 5 and 1 are significant, and the zero trapped in between also becomes significant. So we would say that 5 or 1 has 3 sig figs. The same case goes for 3002. In 3002, we know 3 and 2 are significant. The zeros trapped in between also become significant, so we would say that this number has four significant figures. Rule number two. Zeros in front of a number, which we'll refer to as leading zeros, do not count as sig figs, as they're only marking the decimal place. We can think of these as the numbers bigness or their smallness. So all these zeros are doing here, in this case, in this five ten thousandths spot, all these zeros are doing here, they're just leading us to where that first actual significant value comes in that five. So this, all these zeros could extend up to infinity, but it wouldn't matter until we hit that first digit between one and nine. So in this case, we would say we have one significant figure, the 5. If we have a similar number and we have uh, 0.0050 or 50 ten thousandths, this zero, uh, the leading zeros are still insignificant, but as we'll kind of discuss in a second here, this second zero following this 5 becomes a significant value. If this is a measurement, we know that that 5 is certain and that zero is put in there because it was part of the measurement. It may have been the uncertain digit, but it becomes part one of our significant figures. So we say that this number 50 ten thousandths has two significant figures. Rule number three. Zeros that are following a number before and after a decimal point are also significant. So in this case, we have 50.0 grams. So we can think about we're taking a measurement um, of a weight or of uh, some sort of chemical, and it measures out to be 50 grams. Now on the weight scale, it might give you this exact notation, 50.0 grams. That decimal and that zero after is significant because that 50 are our certain digits, 50 are our certain digits, and that last zero is that uncertain digit there. So 50 decimal zero tells us that we have three significant figures. 
the 50 we are certain about. And because we've put in that zero in that last decimal spot there, we know that in that measurement, that zero must have been at least the estimated guess for that. So that is our third significant figure. Same thing in this case. Let's say your timing, uh, timing of time it takes for a reaction to go to completion. And your stopwatch stops at exactly 5.000 seconds. That five is obviously significant because we're at the five second mark. The stopwatch also notes that the, any zero trailing that in this measurement is also significant. The only one that would be uncertain is that last zero after that value, or after these zeros here. So we would say that because these are trailing this decimal and they're included in this measurement, that this number has four significant figures. Finally, any zeros at the end of a number are not significant when no decimal point is shown. So let's say, for example, we have 10. So 10 could be we have a, let's say we'll call it 10 inches, and we have a ruler that goes up by inches, and we have a measurement that stops somewhere between 9 and 10. Now, if we had to make an estimation between this and round it to one significant figure, we would probably go that this is maybe a little bit closer to 10. So, we would have to round this up to 10. That still doesn't mean that we have any value or that the zero is a significant number. It just means that it was the closest uh, non-decimal number that we could round this value up to. So, this zero in this measurement doesn't necessarily count for our significant figures. There's no decimal to note that there was another uncertain digit afterwards, so really this is only one significant figure. Similar case for 12,500. These zeros here without a decimal in place tell us that these zeros here are not significant numbers. The uncertain digit lies at this five. So this five becomes the uncertain digit, meaning that this number 12,500 has three sig figs. It would be a completely different story if this was 12,500 decimal zero. So if we had 12,500 decimal zero, because now this measurement has become accurate enough that this zero is uh, significant, the zero was significant in the measurements, uh, this zero becomes our uncertain value. So we would say that this number, 12,500 decimal zero, has six sig figs. Six sig figs. So I just want to quickly go through operations using sig figs. And the rules that you would use if you were doing any sort of mathematical operation while using significant figures. So, as an example, for multiplication and division, the rule is, is that the final answer can only have as many sig figs as the number with the least amount of sig figs. So, just as an example, let's say we had 10 multiplied by 3.2. So, just to review, 10 has one sig fig, because we know there is no decimal here, um, that zero does not count as a significant figure, the only significant figure is this one. 3.2 has two sig figs, because both three and two are always significant, so they'll both count towards our significant digits. So if we multiply this together, 10 times 3.2, we get 32. Now our final answer can only have as many sig figs as a number with the least amount of sig figs. So we have to round this value here to make it have one significant figure. So in order to do that we'll have to do some rounding. So we're going to have to round this uh, 32 to a d uh, number that has one significant figure. Well if we go into its closest 10 
we know that the closest 10 to 32 is 30. So, the final answer would have to be 30 because we only know that in that 10 measurement, one sig fig is at, well, one figure is actually significant. So our final answer can only have one significant figure. So we round it down from 32 into 30, which, as we know, because there is no decimal, has one significant figure. Next, for addition and subtraction. The final answer when an addition and subtraction with significant figures can only have as many decimal places as the number with the fewest. Decimal places. So let's see what we mean by that. Let's say we have a number such as 156 plus 3.7. 156 plus 3.7. In this case, it's important to note that significant figures don't matter. What matters is the accuracy of that decimal place. So this number here, 3.7, has one digit after the decimal, so one decimal place. 156 has no digits after the decimal place, telling us that the 6 here was the last or the uncertain digit in this measurement. So if we add it together, 156 plus 3.7, 159 .7, we know that this answer has to be rounded to the uh, uh, to the amount of decimal places of the number with the fewest decimal places. So we have to round this number to zero decimal places. So, which means we have to take the seven and round it up to our next nearest whole number. We know seven was gonna round this up. It's gonna round this 59 up into 160. So just a quick refresher, for multiplication and division, the lowest number of sig figs determine how many sig figs our answer is going to have to have. In this case, we had one being our lowest, we had to round our answer to one significant figure. In this case, for addition and subtraction, the final answer can only have as many decimal places as the number with the fewest decimal places. In this case, because we had a digit that had no decimal places, we had to round it to an answer that also had no decimal places. So, I encourage you to practice the questions that are provided on the worksheet in front of you and to jot down any questions you might have to go over in class regarding significant figures or operations with significant figures. Thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you guys next class.